Now this is analog DC ammeter design. And I should have said design in the last one. Before I get rid of the DC components that we did in the last one, we designed a meter for 0 to 200 volts DC, and we had to find a series resistor to make it all work. When we do an ammeter, there is symmetry in AC and DC. So if I use a series resistance for a voltmeter, what do you think I would use for an ammeter? And after a pause, then what we'll probably see is resistance in parallel. Now, nothing about the uh, meter movement is going to change. I'm going to use the same meter movement for ammeter as I am voltmeter. So if I've got a 25 microamp ammeter with 500 ohms of resistance, it's going to drop point, uh, 0.0125 volts. We calculated all that in the last video now. But the difference is my range instead of voltage is 2 amps. And I will say... Um, did I mention anything in here on the voltmeter about a battery? So these things, these analog meters will read without a power source, without a battery on voltage and current. So now I want to design it for a range of 2 amps. Okay, so if you guessed parallel, then We've got to come up with what we've got to put in parallel with the meter movement in order to drop 2 amps. And what this parallel resistance is actually called is a shunt. And that, that word shows up in other parts of the electrical um, curriculum because shunt means parallel, series means series. So... If I put it in shunt, then my voltage drop is identical, has to be identical to the meter's drop. Let's get rid of that V in front. 0 0.0125 volts. Has to be the same. Now, based on my 2 amp range, if I'm dropping 25 microamps, my current has to be much greater. Okay, my current has to be much greater because of the 2 amps total, only 25 micro can go through the uh, meter movement. Anything more than that will damage it. So, I've got 2 amps, and we know in a parallel circuit the current divides. So, 25 is going to go through the ammeter, the meter part, if we design it correctly, and the rest of it has to go through the shunt resistor. So 2 minus 25, e to the 6, minus 6, is a lot of current. 1.4975. So 1.4975, much current's got to go through it. 1.9999. Seven five, and that is not microamps that is amps such that this current now and this current have to add up to my total range 2 amps ok so now what kind of resistor do I need to put in shunt with my meter movement in order for it to work well I know voltage and I know current and Ohm's Law says to come up with a resistance, you take the voltage and you divide by the current. So, point zero point zero one two five divided by 1.999975 equals, and what we have here is a very small resistor, point zero zero six two five 
ohms. Zero, zero, six, two, five ohms. Zero point zero zero six two five. And that would be ohms. That is my shunt resistance. Okay? So if I put in two amps, two amps, then what goes through my shunt resistor is the 1.99975 amps. And what goes through my meter movement is the 25 micro. And let's put a unit out there so the instructor does not fuss. Okay. So that's what we got. Now, what we saw with the voltmeter is we have a, a very, very big resistor. So if I go across a voltage source with a voltmeter, that big resistor is going to limit the current. Students in electronics often get in a hurry. They're not careful about how they make their measurements. There's a very precise way to use an ammeter. And if you miss a step or do it wrong, what happens now if I put, instead of putting my ammeter in series like I'm supposed to, I put it across something like a battery. So let's just say instead of putting it in series where the current is limited to 0 to 2 amps, based on our analysis, the current should be between 0 and 2 amps. We know if we put the meter in series or in a circuit with a current limited by other parts of the circuit to 2 amps, we're okay. But if I take that same meter now and I stick it across a 2 volt battery, So I got two volts. So I'm going to make a mistake. Mistake. Measure two volts. Measure across a voltage source. Could be any voltage source. Anything with a voltage source that can supply current. A battery comes to mind, a power supply, or whatever. Okay, measure across a voltage source rather than in series, which is how you're supposed to do it. All right. Well, Ohm's Law says my voltage, which is, let's say, 2 volts. Let's say 1.5 volts. Let's say we're doing it across a AA battery because we think a AA battery, it can't hurt anything, right? So I got 1.5 volts. I have a resistance of 0.00625 ohms in parallel with 500. And if I do a parallel resistance calculation, I'm going to get something just under this. It's going to be about 0.00624 maybe. It's going to be real close to 0.00625. And instead of going through that calculation, we're just going to say, let's just use the 0 0.00625 as my resistance. So if I divide by 0 0.00625 ohms, what do I get? 1.5 divided by 0 0.00625. Now, I'm going across a battery or a voltage source rather than putting the ammeter in the circuit correctly. So let's do that. 1.5 divided by 0 0.00625. Enter. And I get 240. Well, I got good news and bad news. The unit on that current is amps. A 1.5 volt battery probably can't source 240 amps, but it will try. And so what will happen is that battery and all the circuitry in your meter will get quite warm in a hurry as this battery tries to source all the current it can up to 240 amps, which it can't do. 
And so your meter is going to um, have a lot of current through it. What happens through my meter movement? Because I've only got 500 ohms of resistance. So if I take the same 1.5 volts and I divide that by 500 ohms, I'm going to get a number greater than 25 microamps. So my meter will peg and possibly destroy. Things will get warm. My battery will get warm. So we need to somehow pre prevent this in case this actually happens. Now with a voltmeter, if I stick the leads in, that big series resistance we had keeps everything from um, keeps the current limited, if you will. But here, when we do the ammeter, the current is not limited. There's nothing too limited. So what we have to do is we have to use a fuse. So what you will see on your multimeters is your ammeters are fused. There is some maximum current that they will pass, and if you try and pass more current than that, then the fuse will blow. And when the fuse blows, now you have an open circuit, so your resistance technically goes to infinity. And that limits the current to protect the meter movement and the rest of the uh, electronics or the, the rest of the circuit inside the analog ammeter. So it's fused. I've blown more fuses than I can remember. You'll probably blow a fuse or two. That's why they're there in case you accidentally go across voltage source. You have to do fuses. I mean, you have to measure current in the proper way. One other point, where's my DC ammeter, my analog DC ammeter getting its power from? It's getting its power from whatever is the two amps that we're trying to measure. So it doesn't need a battery either. And that's the nice thing about these the old analog uh, ammeters and voltmeters is they'll take readings with no batteries in them because they are designed for a certain range. Everything's static. There's no battery. There's nothing in there. So they, they just work. When you go to a digital multimeter, now you got to put a battery in there just to power up the electronics and give you a display, your battery can go dead and now your meter doesn't work until you get a new battery. So that is ammeter design, which is better than construction. Construction is where you actually put it together in a nice package, make it look good. If I change my range, what I would have to do is I would have to change my uh, shunt resistor to a different value. Now these resistances are so small they are most likely a piece of wire of a certain diameter. And this resistance is, is very tiny. So you're not going to go out and buy a resistor that's .00625. You're probably going to take a piece of wire with a certain cross-sectional area and a certain length and then figure it out in terms of how much resistance that metal, whatever type of metal you use, offers until you find one that's .00625. But you can design these all day, and there are kits to, to build these analog ones. And they're good to have because they're an excellent backup. Okay, I think I've talked that one enough. I thank you for watching.